Hi there, Grand Free Penguin Riders here. In this video, we're going to look at and flow test a Burton Race CNC cylinder head and compare it to one or two others and see what it flows like. So, here we are. Here's the Burton Race CNC cylinder head. Now, I've got to say at this point that, yeah, I know Andy Burton, but this video is not sponsored by them. I purchased this head because I needed a head in a hurry. So, having spoke to Andy Burton and the owner of another company that also does a lot of CNC cylinder heads, I can tell you that, um, yes, Burton heads are done by another well-known company. But what I can tell you is they're not exactly the same head. Um, speaking to both parties, I know that the, the, the porting is slightly different. I also know that on the Burton head here, um, the, the valves, the guides, etc., are all Burton sourced. So, you know, the head, the head it may be done by another company, but it won't be exactly the same as this. So, what have we got? Well, we've got some 45 and a half millimeter inlet valves. And some 38 exhausts. It's nicely finished, face on all sides, it's very clean. This is not an injection casting. They don't do injection castings unless you want to send them to one. But what I can tell you is that with the right port in, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. So it comes with all used springs, guides, whatever. Heavy duty single springs. And this is the flow bench we're gonna run it on. And from the airflow requirements or from the airflow from the head, you can get a pretty good idea of the power potential of any cylinder head. So, in case you don't know, what we have basically is a vacuum cleaner and a controlled vacuum. The head rest re represents a restriction of the air going through it, and by opening a valve for certain increments, based on pressure and pressure differential readings, we can work out what the airflow of the cylinder head is. So we bolt it down to a jig that represents bore size. We have a bit of plasticine around the top which seals the chamber and some measuring kit. So let's get it bolted down. So cylinder is bolted down. I just need to run a quick test for vacuum leaks because obviously if it leaked we've got a vacuum leak it affects the numbers. And we got a huge leak because I forgot to put a spark plug in the head. There's our radius. We need a radius in place to um, promote smooth flow into the port. Well, I haven't crunched those numbers and turned them into CFM yet, but I can tell you that already that's, that's, it's a decent head. It's making some decent airflow numbers. So, how did it do? Well, in terms of flow numbers, um, the peaks were 115 for the Harris and 119 for the Burton head. Um, but as you can see, all three, up to about 350 thou valve lift, there's not a great deal of difference. Um, in, that, in that low to mid lift, the Harris head wins out a bit, probably because it's higher, right, more raised port with the shape of it. But that, that bump on the injection port does tend to restrict high lift flow, unless you actually change the port angle. The last head on there is a 1600 race head I did myself, 
lot, a lot of work in that um, with a couple of modifications that you never see. Um, and yeah, that went on to make 123 CFM, but that's not your common garden off the shelf head. So, you know, I think on balance, actually, given the cost of it, in terms of airflow, um, the Burton head re represents pretty good value for money. Um, all three heads here have got enough flow rate to comfortably exceed 200 brake horsepower, give you enough cam. So, you know, hopefully this helps someone out, and I'll catch you on the flip side. See you later, guys.